Hey guys, this is Hannah Jean Gasper from Elite Nutrition and Performance. I am the nutrition and um, exercise science intern there. So today, in honor of me training for a triathlon in the middle of summer, I'm going to show you guys how to calculate sweat rate um, and also how to replace all the fluids that you lost through sweat. As we know, especially in Columbia, South Carolina, it's an extremely hot time of the year, and so pretty much we sweat even just standing out there, um, and definitely when we're running, biking, whatever it is, you know, football, whatever. So um, I'm going to show you guys how to mathematically calculate it. Don't worry, we're not doing any calculus. It's just simple um, algebra. So um, let's go ahead and we'll get started. Okay, so to calculate sweat rate, um, the first thing that we're going to need to do, pretty simple, is just weigh yourself immediately before exercise. Um, so, weight before exercise. I'm just going to put EXSE for that. Um, and for me, that was 142 pounds today. So, 142 right there. And then what we're going to do as soon as we finish or just as soon as possible. Let's see. Okay. I um, weighed 140. So we're going to weigh ourselves again as soon as we finish exercise. And um, ideally, you want to do this with dry clothes on. So bring a, like, change of clothes or something or just in your house change into something um, because sweat is water and water stays on your clothes. And we all know that our clothes get really heavy after we exercise, so we're not going to get an accurate weight if we have those, like, drenched clothes on still. So we want to take those off so that we can get the most accurate measurement that we can. Um, then all we're going to do, simple math here, no rocket science, is we're going to take our weight before, subtract it from our weight after. And for me, 142 minus 140 is 2 pounds. Nothing crazy there, just some elementary math. Um, and then, because there are 16 ounces in a pound, we're going to times this by 16. So, 2 times 16 ounces is 32 ounces. So, I lost 32 ounces of fluid during exercise. Now, what we're going to do is, oh, hello, we are going to calculate um, the amount of fluids that we consume during exercise. So this is something that you want to be taking mental note of um, on the day that you decide that you want to calculate your sweat rate. Um, and as a rule of thumb, a water bottle, a typical water bottle that we see everywhere, that's about 16 ounces of water. And then um, a 12 ounce, um, well I just said it, but those green cups, those um, like Dixie cups of Gatorade, um, those are about 12 ounces. So those are those green cups that they typically hand out during road races. Um, and um, so yeah, you basically just wanna keep track of how many of those you drink. Um, you can use any other container you want. Just be sure to know um, the volume that it holds. And then from there, just take a mental note of you know how much it goes down during exercise. So um, fluids consumed. And when I say fluids, it doesn't have to be water. It can be um, Gatorade, Powerade, just pretty much anything that you can drink during exercise. Okay, so for me, I concerned, uh, concerned, consumed a little over a water bottle. I had 20 ounces, so like a water bottle and a quarter of another one. Um, so what you're going to do now is you're going to take this number that you calculated up here, which was your weight um, before minus your weight after times by 16. So you're going to take that and you're going to add it to the total amount of fluids you consume during your exercise. So 32 plus six, uh, 20 is um, 52. So 52 ounces. And that's going to be just the amount of fluid that you use. So the net amount. Well, not net, but gross amount. So 52 ounces. Okay, so from here, we wanna take our duration of activities and it's really important that we do this in hours and then you'll see why in a second. So duration of exercise. 
for me today it was um, 90 minutes I did an hour of um, biking and then about 30 minutes of like this plyometric workout doesn't matter but um, so 90 minutes and that equals an hour and a half as we all know so as I said really important this is an hour so make your life a lot easier later on as you will see in step five. So step five is kind of our grand finale of calculating sweat rate. We actually get the number. Um, so pretty simple. You take the number that you got from step three, so the amount of fluids used, amount of fluids used, and you divide it by your duration of activities in hours. Duration of activity and then I'm going to emphasize hours okay so I used 52 ounces gotten from adding step one and step two together so 52 ounces and my activity lasted 1.5 hours okay so I am not a math genius so I'm going to just go ahead and use the calculator on my computer Computer. Work smarter, not harder, right? Um, and 52 divided by 1.5 is 34.6. I'm just going to round that up to 35 because yeah, I'm not going to worry too much about decimal places. <laughs> so my sweat rate is 35. Oh, hello. Obviously not a spelling genius either. Equals 35 ounces per hour. Okay. So what does this mean? Pretty simple. Just means that every hour I am losing 35 ounces um, of sweat. So that's a lot. <laughs> Jeez. Yay South. Okay, so now what? Well, if we're losing 35 ounces of sweat, that means that we're losing 35 ounces of pretty much water and then um, some electrolytes in there too, because we all know salt is sweaty and salt is an electrolyte. So as we know, um, this causes us to be dehydrated and we all know how horrific it is when we are de dehydrated during exercise. It feels like death. So we're gonna take this sweat rate that we calculated and we're gonna use this to figure out how we should replenish our fluids during activity. So um, fluid, replacement so pretty easy calculation once again it's just going to take a little planning ahead so we're going to need two numbers right here first is just the ounces from our sweat rate so um ounces lost per hour it's going here so for me it was 35 ounces okay and then for here um, you want to plan how many sips of water you're going to take per hour. So this seems kind of silly, but it's actually pretty important. I think it's good to go into your training with a, with a game plan. Um, so for me, I like to take a, take a sip of water probably like every five minutes because as you can see, I'm a pretty heavy sweater, so I get thirsty pretty quick. Um, so what we're going to do is we take the... Um, Amount of minutes in an hour, 60, 60 minutes. And um, I know that I drink every five minutes. So 60 divided by five is 12. So basically I'm taking 12 drinks per hour. So drinks per hour, I drink 12. So for you, if you drink every 15 minutes, which I feel like is what most people probably do, um, then you would do 60 minutes divided by 15 minutes, so you know that you're getting four drinks per hour. Um, so what we're going to do is take 35, or you know, the amount of ounces that you lose per hour, divided by, for me, 12, which is the amount of drinks that I'll be taking per hour. So 35 divided by 12 is 2.91, and I'm going to go ahead and round that to 3. So I know that I should be taking three ounces of water in for every drink that I take. So 
Each one of those 12 drinks is going to have three ounces of water in it, which is a little under half a cup or basically a quarter of a typical water bottle or um, exactly a quarter um, of those little Gatorade Solo cups. Not, yeah, Dixie cups. So, um, yeah, what, it, what this basically is going to do for me is it's going to ensure that um, I am getting in the right amount of water to replace... Um, the amount of fluids that I lose. And by doing this, um, you're going to inhibit the um, process of dehydration in your body. Now, you don't want to take more than this. More isn't always better, especially when it comes to hydration. Because what you're going to do if you take in too much water itself um, is it's going to cause you to become overhydrated, um, which is going to basically dilute your blood so that... Um, it doesn't have a high of a concentration of electrolytes anymore. And when you have a low electrolytes in your blood, so all those salts and stuff like that, it's going to cause the same effects of being dehydrated. Um, so that's why they actually recommend that if you're exercising for a really long time, you can drink Gatorade or at least try to replenish your electrolytes through some kind of salt tablet, which is what I do because Gatorade just doesn't sit well in my stomach. It just kind of depends person to person. But, um, Basically, the moral of the story is that sweat rate is really important to calculate um, if you are um, an exerciser and especially a heavy sweater and just pretty much anyone who goes outside during the summer. Um, and it's a great way to um, ensure that hydration is not going to impact your training in a negative way. It's a way to help you peak your performance. So um, from here... If you have any other questions, I would definitely recommend um, scheduling a free consultation with our dietitian um, and talking about maybe setting up a sports nutrition um, plan just so you can learn a little bit more about this stuff. Um, or we also have an online program called Sports Nutrition Basics, and basically through that you will be learning um, how to calculate sweat rate and um, energy needs and all that good stuff during your exercise um, and just a way to really peak your performance as an athlete um, whether you participate in you know college sports or just recreational road races or triathlons like myself and um, yeah it's just a really great resource and I love it because it's completely online so I'll attach the link to that um, info page below and I definitely recommend you looking into it so that's all I have for today. I hope you guys have a wonderful 4th of July and that you all stay hydrated and you stay cool in this famously hot Columbia, South Carolina. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.